Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Richard Seidlitz, I'm the owner of redpants.lol and today we're gonna to talk about how this little sensor can cause you some big problems. In my last video, I talked about Aston Martin batteries and towards the end of that video, I mentioned that no matter how good or how big a battery is, if there's something wrong with the car that prevents that battery from functioning properly, it's gonna be helpless. And that reminded me of a story. An Aston Martin got taken to the dealership with a dead battery. Technician replaced the battery, sent it back to the customer. Customer comes back and says, hey, battery's dead again. So they took a closer look at this car and during the process of trying to figure out why this car wasn't charging batteries, they replaced the alternator, some cables, a few other things, and they could not figure out why this car would not charge batteries. At some point, one of the technicians realized that the outside temperature display in the infotainment panel was wildly inaccurate. It was like negative triple digits. Obviously not correct. So they replaced the ambient air temperature sensor. Temperature display went back to normal, and lo and behold, the car started charging the battery again. So technicians went to the factory and said, hey, here's what happened, here's how we fixed it, why? Why did this happen at all? And so the factory said, oh, there's a fail-safe mode. Basically, if the car thinks that it's extreme temperature outside, be it extremely cold in this situation, it will disconnect the battery from being charged to prevent any kind of damage from happening. It's a safety thing. That's fair enough. Weird thing to figure out this way, but now we all know, and hopefully this helps somebody out in the future if you come across this problem. The ambient air temperature sensor sits in the nose of an Aston Martin, and it is responsible for telling the car what the temperature is outside. These can go bad. Usually, it's not to the extent that we heard about in this story. It's usually maybe 5 or 10 degrees, sometimes 20 or 30 degrees. And sorry, I'm talking Fahrenheit. I wish we had Celsius in America, but our numbers here are all messed up measurements, so just bear with me. Um, if this is off by, you know, 5 degrees Fahrenheit, it's no big deal. If it's a couple degrees Celsius, no big deal. That's not something you need to worry about. If this is off by 20 or 30 degrees, then you need to start looking at replacing it. It's very rare for the temperature reading from these to go so badly that it has a problem like we heard about in this story, but it can happen. So if you notice that your temperature sensor is wildly, or your outside temperature reading is wildly inaccurate, be it 20 or 40 degrees, you may want to consider replacing this. So this is a very easy part to replace. There are two things that I would highly suggest doing unless you have the slenderest arms and hands ever. First is to remove the slam panel or the radiator shroud is what it's called in most cars. On our car it's called a slam panel. And the other is to remove the grill. You don't necessarily have to remove the grill, but I'm telling you right now that that quick job is going to make this infinitely easier. So it's something I definitely recommend doing is removing the grill to do this job. All you need aside from the tools for those jobs is a set of needle nose pliers. That's just gonna slip right onto this little clip right here to press in these little arms. And when you get the sensor, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There is a spot down at the bottom of these two arms for you to slip the needle nose pliers into to release them. You release the old one. You have one connector on the back that you just pinch in with your fingers to disconnect, and that sensor's out. You put the new one in, you button it back up, and then you're done. There's no computer stuff necessary. There's no calibration. All you do is you swap the sensor itself and button things back up, and you're finished. So let's go out to the car so you can see this for yourself. While we're here, I wanted to point out a couple things. As you can see, my slam panel is missing, and I wanted to point this out uh, real quickly. Two of the questions that come up a lot is where can I find my pain code? There it is right there. And also, if you need another place for your VIN, that sticker right there. So um, something to note about the slam panel as well is do not close your hood with that slam panel not being in place. If that slam panel is missing, there's not gonna be enough of a spring-loaded tension to pop the hood from the inside of the car. You will have to have somebody lift up on the nose of the hood while another person is pulling the latch inside the cabin in order to open the hood of the car. So anytime you take off this slam panel, make sure it is back in the car before you close the hood. Down here, we have got what would be the front bumper armature and a bunch of other stuff. I don't have it because I've got a lightweight front end from the GT4 race car on my car. Um, but here is the temperature sensor right there. And mine's just hanging out because one of the many, many things that the armature does is hold the temperature sensor and I don't have that. So mine's just kind of hanging out, but this is the sensor. So you can see where it's located on the car. That is the spot it's gonna be at. It's not very hard to get to, but you can see why the grill coming out 
and it's just right over there. I'm going to refinish this thing. Um, while the grill coming out and the slam panel being off, it's going to open up that space a lot, and then it's very easy to get to. So nothing too difficult, and here's the button to press right here in order to release it. Another job done quickly and easily, and hopefully it prevents a big headache for you if your sensor goes bad in your Aston Martin. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. I'll have some links in the description to help you out with some of these things like the grill removal in case you've never done it before. And if you need to reach out directly, you can do so rich at redpants.lol or on the contact page of redpants.lol. I'll see you next time.